Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Elegoo Saturn II 8K resin printer. Personally, I do prefer FDM printing over resin printing, as I mainly print functional parts. And after a print is finished, most of the time with FDM printing, you can just grab it without any post-processing, unlike resin printing, where you need to wash the model and cure it using UV light. However, there are limitations to FDM printing, like how you can't print models with tiny details. Resin printers, on the other hand, have a much higher resolution and are very affordable too. Generally, an entry-level resin printer for $200 or less comes with a 2K resolution, a $300 one comes with a 4K resolution, and one with an 8K resolution only costs around $400 to $500. The Saturn 8K series comes with two models. The Saturn has a slightly smaller printing volume at 218 by 123 by 210 millimeters and costs $450, while the Saturn II comes with a slightly taller Z-axis at 218 by 123 by 250 millimeters and costs $550. This means the Saturn II can print models as tall as an Ender 3, which is pretty large compared to other standard resin printers. Besides the 10-inch 8K resolution mono LCD screen, this printer also comes with two linear rails on the Z-axis, a USB-powered air filter, an all-metal resin tray, and a cutout at the back of the cover for you to connect a duct to exhaust the air outside. I would like to thank Elegoo for sending me the machine to review, and with that, let's get started. The machine pretty much comes in one piece. All you have to do is remove all the protective materials. We have the machine, the build platform, the USB-powered air filter, the power supply, and some tools. First. Unscrew the resin tray from the machine to remove the protective plastic. Then, screw the resin tray back on, plug in the power cord, and turn on the machine. Go to Tool, Manual, and move the Z-axis up so you have enough room to install the build platform. Before we level the platform, make sure to loosen the two screws so that the platform can move freely. Now, press the home button to home the machine. It will reach the optical limit switch at the bottom, and we can now make the build platform as level as possible and first hand tighten these two screws, and tighten them completely with the wrench after. So, this is our zero Z position. As resin is a toxic substance, I will put on the mask and gloves that came with the machine before handling the resin. I still have two bottles of resin of the same type and brand left over from before, so I will just mix them to form my own color. Plug in the USB-powered air filter, and we can put the cover on, insert the USB drive, and start our first print, which is this sample file of two rooks. The print ended up finishing in about three and a half hours. Now, I will use the Elegoo Mercury washing and curing machine that I have previously tested. I will scrape both rooks into the tank, which is filled with isopropyl alcohol that is not fresh, as I've used it to wash other resin prints before, but I think it still works. I will start by trying to wash it for two minutes. After it's done washing, I will show you my ultra-secret weapon when it comes to resin printing, which is this pair of super long chopsticks. I will remove the rooks from the tank, and then swap out the tank for a turntable. After putting the rooks back, change the working mode to curing mode, and I will try curing it for 3 minutes. As I mix two bottles of resin together, the color of the two rooks are different, but I think it still looks pretty cool. The tiny text at the top is very clear, and it is much better when compared to one printed by an FDM printer, which entirely skips over the text, as FDM printers cannot print such high details. The stairs inside the rook in the FDM version also don't look too good. 
As you can see, the resin is starting to whiten. This is most likely because I washed or cured the prints for too long or because the alcohol has been used too many times and is no longer as clear as it was before. After that, let's install their slicer Chi2 box so that we can slice our own prints. Go to settings and select the model of the printer, which in this case is the Elegoo Saturn 2. As you can see, the exposure time of each layer is 2.5 seconds, but as we want the first five bottom layers to stick better, the exposure time is set to 30 seconds. These parameters look good to me, so I will just leave them as is. Let's slice our first model, which is the Eiffel Tower. This tower is 120 millimeters tall and will take about seven hours. After printing, the gaps in the model are all currently filled with resin, so we need to wash the print to be able to properly see all the details. As I washed the rooks for too long last time, I will just try washing this tower for one minute. Repeat the same process to cure the tower, and I will lower the curing time to two minutes. The final result looks great. The structure is very clean, even when you zoom in closer. If we compare this to a larger version printed by an FDM printer, even though the FDM version is two times larger, the details printed by this resin printer are still much better. Next, I will print these four spiritual spell models. I tried curing them for a minute at first, but after seeing that the bottom of the models was still sticky, I flipped them over onto their sides and cured them for another minute. These four models turned out beautiful, especially considering how small they are. When you zoom in, you can see that all of the small details like the patterns on the sword are still very much visible. Let's try printing the same models with the Prusa MK3S Plus with a 0.05 layer height and see what happens. The print had a lot of stringing and all of the details were lost, so you can't really tell what the models are anymore. I will also test the same models with the Ultimaker S3 with a 0.06 layer height and see how the gold standard of FDM printers handles this. The result did turn out better than the Prusa, as you can still sort of tell what the models are. But when printing tiny models, FDM printers, no matter how good, simply cannot compare to resin printers. After that, let's print a model of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Before, when I used an FDM printer to print this model at around a 300mm height, most of the small surrounding pillars couldn't be printed, but let's see how this resin printer handles it. Repeat the same process of washing, which I did for one minute, curing for one minute with the print standing up, and curing for one more minute with the print on its side. This model also looks pretty good, particularly when compared to the FDM version. Although the FDM version is much bigger, the details on the resin version are much better and all of the pillars were printed well. Finally, let's try to print two models of the Statue of Liberty at the same time. This is because no matter how many models you're printing, the exposure time of each layer is still going to be 2.5 seconds, so there's no difference between the printing time of 1 or 10 models as long as you can fit them all on the build plate. Both models look fine, so after washing them for 1 minute, cure them for 1 minute. If you don't cure the prints for too long, you won't see any whitening, which is what I would prefer. I would rather let the models cure naturally under normal light. Let's compare the print to a same size model printed by an FDM printer. From afar, the FDM version still looks okay, but when you zoom in, you can clearly see that there is a huge difference in the quality of the details. Okay, let's talk about what I think of this machine. Setting up this printer is easy. It comes in one piece and it works right out of the box. 
the entire workflow is smooth, and although I just used the preset parameters in the slicer for the printer without changing any settings, it works great and I still get pretty good results from all of my prints. The print quality of the 8K resolution is awesome. Last year, I tested out the Mars Pro 2K resin printer and the quality was already pretty good, but when using this 8K Saturn II, every little detail just looks even better. The 8K resolution mono LCD screen can also print really quickly. The exposure time of each layer is only 2.5 seconds, and as this time applies to the entire layer, no matter how large your model is or how many items you print, just as long as you can fit it all on the build plate, it still only takes 2.5 seconds per layer. The air filter does its job well. After the print is finished, I can still smell a bit of resin odor, but it's still much better than other printers without a filter. However, if you need to print resin all day, using the cutout at the back of the cover and connecting a duct to exhaust the air outside is the better option. The thing I don't like about resin printing is the post-processing, as washing and curing the model requires a lot more work compared to FDM printing, so I highly recommend spending an extra $115 to get the Mercury Plus washing and curing station. You still need to go through the same process, but it makes your life much easier. Besides that, using my super secret weapon, the extra long chopsticks, also makes it even easier if you don't want to wear gloves all the time. In conclusion, I still prefer FDM printing, but when you need to print models with tiny details, resin printing is the way to go. No matter how good your FDM printer is, it just can't print small detailed models like a resin printer. If you're interested in this 8K resolution Elegoo Saturn II, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. Please subscribe and turn on the notification bell to receive new video updates. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.